The last main category we're going to study in our look at probability and statistics here in Algebra 2 are what are called distributions. Now the first type of distribution is a discrete distribution, meaning that there's individual units, and it is the binomial distribution. Now in order for something to qualify as a binomial distribution, it needs to have certain characteristics, and there are four of them. The first of those characteristics is there must be a fixed number of trials. You're only going to do an activity a certain number of times, and each time you perform the activity, you do it the exact same number. Our second item is that there can only be two outcomes possible. For instance, if you're flipping a coin, your outcomes are heads or tails. If you have options that have more than this, then it has to be able to be simplified down. For instance, in a few minutes we're going to be talking about taking a multiple choice test. There is a lot of choices per question, but ultimately you have one that is right and everything else that is wrong. So only two outcomes are available. The third characteristic is that all trials must be independent. Now going back to independent and dependent means that what we get for the outcome of our first trial has no influence on the second, third, or fourth. Each one must be able to do its own thing. Our last characteristic is that the probabilities are constant. We can't have our first trial be a 50-50 probability and our second trial being a 60-40. Each time we run an exercise, it must be independent. No, sorry, it must be have consistent probability as to the outcomes. So when we look at a binomial distribution, the way we calculate it is based on the following formula. And that is P of X equals N choose X. N is the number of trials that we're going to perform. X is the number of successes that we are seeking for. Times P to the X. Now P is our probability of success. Times Q to the n minus x. And q, again, is the probability of failure. So if we're taking, flipping a coin and we want heads, p would be 50%, 1 half, q would be 50%, another 1 half. If we are looking at the probability of snow for a day, and it's a 30% chance of snow, p would be 30%, q would be 70%. P is the probability of getting what we're looking for. Q is what's left over. So it doesn't always have to be an even distribution or an equal split on those probabilities. Just we have to be able to know what our probability of success and probability of failure are. So let's take a look right away at how we can apply this concept into a situation. So you did not study for a science quiz and cannot answer any of the questions when it's passed out to you. This quiz is made up of 10 multiple choice questions with four choices on each question. Of course, of those four, only one is correct. What is the probability of guessing all questions and getting a B or an 80%? So what we have to do is look at the items that we need. N is the number of trials. In this case, there are 10 questions, so there are 10 trials. X is the number of successes that we need. In order to get an 80% out of 10 questions, we have to get 8 correct. Doesn't matter which 8, just 8 of them. P is our probability of success. So if there's four choices per question we're just picking, then we have a 25% chance of getting the answer we needed. And Q is the probability of failure. In this case, we have a 25% chance of success. We have a 75% chance of failure. So using this, we are going to substitute values into the formula we had. So the probability of getting a B or an 80% is 10 choose 8 times 0.25, 25% to the 8th power. So we have to get 8 of them correct times 0.75 or 75 percent to the 10 minus 2 we're allowed to no, sorry 10 minus 8 we're allowed to get two questions wrong now we need to go through and do these calculations 
So beginning with 10 choose 8, that is equal to 45. Now 0.25 I can convert into 1 quarter. 1 quarter to the 8th power is 1 over 65,536. And then 3 quarters squared is 9 sixteenths. We multiply all this together and we come out with a probability of roughly 0 0.000386 or convert it into a percent 0.0386%. So if you do not study for a 10 question quiz, multiple choice for cho um, possible answers on each one, and you just guess, you have less than a 20th of a percent chance of passing with a B. So that's a little bit high. Let's try it again looking for just passing. That would be a D. So now the probability of scoring a D is equal to still 10 questions, but this time we only have to get six of them correct, times a quarter to the sixth power and three quarters to the fourth power. Now, going through and calculating this, we are going to get 210, that is 10 choose 6, times a quarter to the sixth power will be 1 over 4096 times 81, 3 to the fourth power, over 256, that's 4 to the fourth, and simplifying this along, we come out to 0 0.0162, or roughly 1.62%. So a little over 1.5% of the time, if you completely guess everything, you'll just get by with a D. Moral of the story, study for your tests and quizzes when they're coming up, because you can't just rely on guessing your way there. So when we have the binomial distribution, we are able to use it to apply out to a few other things rather than just probability. And one of those are what are called binomial expansion, is an a plus b expression. So if we have a plus b raised to the nth power, we can use these ideas of the binomial model, the formula we were just working with, in order to find individual terms. And the way it works is if we have a plus b to the n, then we can find any term in that sequence, and what it is is i, let me do that without it being looking like imaginary i, i is the number of the term. So if I want a specific term out of this, then what I will have is n choose i times the value of a to the n minus i times b to the i. And what we're looking at here would be something like a plus b squared. And knowing this one, it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Well, we'd be able to work that for other items, other expansions. So what is the third term of 2x plus 3 to the 7th? Using our formula, this is going to be 7, our exponent. Choose our third term, 3. Sorry about that, our small correction. i is the number of term minus 1. So instead of choose 3, we're going to choose 2. And the reason is, is that for our first term, we're going to choose 0. I forgot about that in this. So n choose i, n, yeah, n choose i, if we're looking for the third term, it will be 7 choose 2, 1 less than the number of term, times our a value, which is 2x. So we have 2x to the n minus i, so we have 7 minus 2, which is 5, times our b value, which is simply 3, 
to the i value, that's 3 squared. So when we go through and expand this out, 7 choose 2 is 21. We're going to multiply that by 2 to the 5th is 32, so we have 32x to the 5th, times 3 squared is 9. Multiplying the numbers on this will give us 6048x to the 5th. Now this seems a little bit longer, but if you were to try and to multiply 2x plus 3 to the 7th, that would be 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3, and doing this and all the distribution 7 times, and then coming out. So when we did that, what would be the third term in that procedure? Well, it's going to be this. It's going to be 6048x to the 5th. And if you think about it, the first term would be an x to the 7th. Then it'll go down x to the 6th. third one will be x to the 5th. What would the sixth term be? So what we're going to have here is 7 choose. If it's the sixth term, we're choosing 5. And that is times... 2x to the n minus i, 7 minus 5 is 2, times our b term, 3 to the i power, which is 5. Now, 7 choose 5 is also 21, but now we're at 2 squared, which is just 4, so we have 4x squared. 3 to the 5th is 243. And multiplying that out, we will get 20,412x squared. So the further along we get, the more influence that 3 has, and the less influence the 2 has in our end number. So binomial distribution will help with this. If you've ever worked with Pascal's triangle, that can be built also using the binomial expansions. So let's take a look at another way that this idea of binomial distribution and binomial expansions can be applied, and that's in quality control. So each hour, a cell phone manufacturer randomly selects four units to be tested for quality and durability. If more than one fails the test, that whole hour's worth of units are rejected. Now on average, they found that 5% of the units made are defective. So what is the probability of rejecting the batch on any given hour? Now in order to do this, if 0 fail, or if 1 fail, we are just fine. There's no reason to reject the, system, the set. So this is okay. But if 2, 3, or 4 fail, then this is rejection. They figure that, okay, we had an hour where things were good, but we have more items that are defective in this one, so we're just going to reject the whole batch and start the process over again with those. So how do we go about calculating this? What it will be is if we have four of our items fail and none pass, and if possibility of three of them failing and one pass, and the probability that two of them fail and two of them pass. Now if one fail or if zero fail, then it's not a problem for us. So what we have to do is figure these out. Now P again, P is 5% and Q is 95%. So we're going to go 0 0.05 to the fourth. And to that, we're going to add 0 0.05 to the third times 0.95 to the first. And to that, we will add the 0 0.05 to the squared and 0.95 squared. Now with these we also have multipliers happening. It's our choose items. So we would have you know, 4 choose 4 which is 1. 
we would have 4 choose 3, which when we calculate that out, 4 choose 3, there's 4 ways to do that. And we would have 4 choose 2, which when we calculate that out, there are 6 ways. So multiplying these out, 5% five, uh, 5 to the 4th is 0 0.5. Zero point, sorry, zero 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 six. Now four times the next one, we have zero point zero 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 four seven five. And six times our last item will be zero point zero one three five three eight. Now adding those individual probabilities together we come out with it being approximately 0 0.014019 or about 1.4 percent of the time. So the likelihood that this manufacturer is going to reject an entire hour's worth of production because of the quality control tests will actually happen only a little less than one and a half percent of the time. So a lot of items going on here. It's all based around this binomial distribution and binomial uh, probabilities formula. So make sure you have this ready to go and we'll see what we can do with it.